Alberta Progressive Conservative Party leadership vote with about 77% of party support. We asked the Premier-designate to come on the show this morning, but uh, he declined to come on. But Danielle Smith, the leader of the Wild Rose opposition, is joining us live in studio this morning to talk about last night's political development. First of all, good morning, Danielle. Good morning to you. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming in and talking about uh, this news, which isn't totally surprising. But uh, let's start off with your reaction to uh, the support, that 77% uh, support, and also about the turnout. The 77 support is a troubling figure for the PC party. Remember, Ed got 77% support before he ended up facing a caucus coup, as did Alison Redford. She got 77% support at her leadership review. So the fact of the matter is it was obviously much higher than his two competitors. But I, I don't think that he should take any comfort in the fact that only 23,000 people bothered to vote in this race. The PCs have traditionally been seen as the natural governing party, and so more Albertans have always participated in their contest. Two, year, the two, two times ago, it was 90,000 people who voted on the first ballot. Last time, it was almost 60,000 people. To have only 23,000 people vote, I think that that is a statement that people have broken that tie to the PCs. They no longer see them as the obvious choice in the next election. And there's an awful lot of work for the new leader to do to be able to earn the public trust. I frankly don't think it can be done. I think that the PCs, I think what we're seeing with Mr. Prentice is he will be the last PC premier. And he has 18 months to try to keep things stable. But I can't see how how he's going to, to be able to make any improvements. Now, his uh, big push was that he is um, a new person to the table. He wasn't a part of the Redford uh, government or cabinet, uh, unlike the other two competitors. Uh, he would likely, you would think, have a chance at rebuilding because he is that outsider, but you don't think so. We don't have a Republican system. Uh, when you're in a parliamentary system, you have to build your cabinet and your team out of the people who got elected with you. And so he has to build a cabinet and team out of the people who are already there, the people who created the mess that we're in right now. Uh, the, when you talk about making change, you, you can't just say you're going to make change. You actually have to, to do things that demonstrate you're making change. And I, I noticed Mr. Prentice talked about integrity. There's a few things that he actually has to do if he's going to demonstrate that there is a real change. Number one is he has to sell the government air fleet. It has been just a, a center of controversy. It has been so badly managed. It's under an RCMP investigation for misuse. That would be one tangible sign that he gets what Albertans have told him. Second thing is he has to hold people accountable for all of the scandals that have occurred over the last number of years. And it's not just Alison Redford's fault. It's the, uh, Wayne, uh, Wayne Drysdale, the infrastructure minister, who turned a blind eye to the Sky Palace. It's Doug Horner who turned a blind eye to the to the management of the government air fleet. At a minimum, those two ministers have to go. But then we've also seen Fred Horn make an absolute bungle of the health care system. Uh, uh, same with uh, with Jeff Johnson in the education system. If he's really going to demonstrate that this is a, a new cabinet, new face, a new administration, at a bare minimum, those four cabinet ministers have to be fired. Are you willing to give him a chance? I, you know, he has to get elected first, and that's not an easy task. I think the fact of the matter is he chose not to run in Calgary Elbow, I believe, because he doesn't think it's a winnable seat for the PCs, which is pretty remarkable considering that our premiers historically have come from that area. Now it can't be won by the PCs. So I, I would hope that very soon he would, he would make his intentions known about where he does intend to run, and he is going to get a, a run for his money from the Wild Rose. He Platitudes may be enough to win the PC leadership contest, but when you're in a real race, you actually have to have some ideas on the table, demonstrate what it is you're really going to do, and we're going to be pressing pretty hard to make sure that he has to work really hard to win that seat. All right, the fall session of the legislature starting up in October, and you're going to have some fiery questions, I imagine, the first couple of questions. <laughs> there period. is so much to be held to, to account. Right. Thank, Thank you so for coming for in this morning, yeah. and again, we did ask the Premier-designate to uh, come in this morning, but he declined.